in the know, non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Dude, the Rhino might be back, bro. Football. Is he's fresh off Yo. bicycle training? His little bicycle with the tassels as he trains for uh, Iron Man's. Dude, he's I'm fresh all off up training today, Listen, future NFL offensive linemen, you're and now he's worse. I don't you're have my carving iPad. out the time to be with us and Vikings fans right now. We appreciate Dude. that, Booney. Bro, I'm kind of I'm, I don't have my iPad with me because I it burnt out when we were at the gym today, and I totally forgot to charge it. I feel like an idiot. I'm an idiot. It does feel naked without technology, right? You know, I just need like something like at least with a little bit of a picture of the game or the highlights of the game or something, and I don't know. I'm going to be fine. You know what's going to happen? I'm going to go on a wild tangent today. You better be ready. Uh, yeah, I think, the, I think the text message with the 12 plays you want to go over earlier that I grabbed all 12, by the you way. You should so have seen the 35 that I originally wanted. I was like, we should do all of these. <laughs> it's like and then I was the like, plays. well, no, we should Let's just do watch that. the whole game for six right? hours. Let's just, go, let's back just go back and rewatch the whole game, and I can show you how much this – Bullshit pisses me <laughs> off, dude. I am so livid right now. Well, so livid. So let's okay. By the way, this is trenches with Boone oh. here. Alex Boone, ten plus year NFL veteran. He played in the Super Bowl with the uh, San Francisco 49ers, former Viking. Uh, I'm just a dude with a microphone asking stupid questions about football, and um, we will get into an extensive film breakdown here on this show. And we'll, we're not gonna we're not gonna make you wait like 30 minutes like we do mm. sometimes. We're gonna get into it. Um, but what is your, what is your main takeaway or thought? I mean, you were, and I'm not like, I, you and I were kind of in lockstep. People, you know, this is a fraudulent team, and it's like, well, okay, eleven and zero. They figured something out in these close games. You don't just fraud your way to thirteen wins. But this loss, I feel like, gives everyone who said that ammunition to now come back and say, well, now what? in the end, they were fraud. So, what is your main takeaway now? They were. <laughs> I mean, they absolutely were. They have to be, Oh, right? man, look at you. I, and believe me, I'm eating my own words. But and I, here's my, here was my point before, and I don't know if anyone caught me, but like, my whole point was a great offense can outweigh a bad defense because as long as you continue to churn butter and score points and have fun and do this thing, nothing really is going to go wrong. Now, every now and then you're going to lose a game. And that's why, like, during the year, a couple losses doesn't seem so dramatic to me. It's like, man, you lost, lost four games. Okay. It's, it's Okay, it is what it is. And to me, maybe the Packers game didn't seem so bad because they were so down on the offensive line and the snap counts were all over the place. And that game was just a shit show to start with, right? But then you come into this game, and it just – To me, it seemed like before the Vikings kind of had this team, they had a little bit of a leg up on them. Their offense seemed a little bit better. And I was like, well, you know what? The defense will still be able to keep at least Daniel Jones in the pocket, which they certainly did not. I mean, no, that was the that was the biggest piss me off of the day was how much he just kind of ran around. And then there's a play that I told you to pull that they ran several times that seriously made me throw my phone at the wall. Because I was like, how does nobody see this lined up the same way every goddamn time? And they're running. I'm just. <sighs> and that's why to me it just seems so lackadaisical. It seemed like they didn't really want to win. I'm not even kidding you. When you let Matt Breida break four tackles for a first down on third and three. Dude, there is no more excuses. I mean, we all know he checked down the last play. There is zero excuse for that. Like, somebody was talking to me, and they were like, he was under a lot of duress, though. I was like, listen, there's an agreement between the O-line and the quarterback, and that is on fourth down, I won't let anyone come through the A-gap, but you won't check it down because that is a no-go. Like, it's not happening. Nobody is really – unless you're Saquon who ran through the nose tackle for four yards, like, it's just not happening. And he did. It was like, no way. All the ammo – just went right back into everybody else's. And as yeah. soon as he caught that check down, I don't know where I was. I think it was at a hockey game. Searle's FaceTiming. I was like, <laughs> this can't be good. This can't be good. So I was like, hey, I'm really busy right now. And the next text was, dude, don't you even dare. You better answer that phone. I said, I'm like, what? What do you want, dude? He's like, did you see him throw the check down? I was like, no. He's like, I'm fourth and eight. I was like, no. 
throw the check down on fourth and eight. He'd never throw the check down on fourth and eight. Like I just. And now there's back, a two thousand dollar dinner he tab. He reared his way. ugly head in just the worst possible time. The worst, dude. Okay, because oh. again, you have been. No, I feel like you and I have I kind of been, been in lockstep on Kirk too, and that we both were a little critical, or me a lot critical, and you we were. a little critical going going mm-hmm. into the season, mm-hmm. and then and then he's done so many things. The four, fourth quarter comeback, Kirk, right? and he could and, take these hits and still deliver. We're not we're not. Remember last year? I mean, I might have bashed him more than anybody because I was like, I just can't stand how we can't take a hit and deliver the ball. Like you're gonna get peppered. And then this year, I was like, wow, completely different. This guy actually knows what's going on. He must be more comfortable and then the last play of the game you check it down on fourth and eight I just don't understand what he's thinking okay how because i'm so man i, I didn't th- no, i actually didn't think this was going to be your opinion and i'm i'm I, you're interested probably to deeper, stunned right? right and i am too and that's so, why it sucks well let me ask you because uh there's been there's been a bunch of different if you did like a pie chart of blame for that play and i, I do want to oh, say too i could do the whole game right now you ready Okay. I'm giving yeah. Kevin. I'm giving Kevin some. Absolutely. What's your okay? Well, you just Don't what kind of what kind of pie why. did you just pull out of your oven, by the way? Before I mean, I'm pulling out a good twenty percent right there. That third. No, down. like the actual pie that you pulled out of your oven before we hit the mics. What kind of pie is that? Oh, uh, blueberry. Okay. I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that third down play was the dumbest call I've seen in a long. The one time. before the fourth. Yes. No, the one that you know. The oh, the trick pass. play. That everybody's like, the minute you pass the ball behind the quarterback, it's a huge antenna alert to everybody, right? Like, something's really drastic has just happened, but that was bad. Um, I'm blaming the O-line because Kirk was just getting hit a lot. And Mm -hmm. at times, the O-linemen were at his feet, and then he was getting hit, and that wasn't good. And the defense, I mean, dude, come on. We can't even. There was not a lot being stopped there. And the whole game was exactly what we thought it would be. Daniel Jones running around, creating plays, and at the same time, them drawing, how do we get Saquon the ball in space with nobody around him? And that's exactly what they did. And it's just, they're like methodically driving down the field, having fun doing it, and just creating these quick, am I going to run it? Am I going to throw it? Putting Kendricks in these bad positions. And that was another thing, like the way that they lined their formations up and the way that they shifted and created all these mismatches. And it's just like, dude... They're slowly pulling you guys apart, and then the offense couldn't keep up, and they kind of just tripped a step a little bit, and you're like, no, that was the one that they needed. Oh, boy. That's Mm. enough. Uh, Before we continue on with your pie chart here, your pie chart of blame, uh, we do have a special guest that would like to get some uh, comeuppance here. His name is Jeremiah Serrell. Yes. (laughs) My bestest. He's your former teammate. Hello, friends. How are you? And he is plotting a three thousand dollar dinner at Just or more numbers. or more I at just, his restaurant of choosing for uh, what just, happened against the Giants. Hey, a- Alex, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, yeah we got you. You got us, okay? Absolutely. You know, Alex, I just want to go back. I, I would like a statement of regret written. Huge. Like, I'd, I'd like to hear a statement of regret from you because I sat on your couch last week <laughs> while you did this show. And I kept looking over at you, and you're like, I guess the Giants are just really good all of a sudden. And, uh, you know, I think the Vikings have just won 13 games all of a sudden. And you just didn't believe your own eyes. Dude, it was very, it was a very mocking tone from Alex, I can attest. Yes. It was bad. I agree. And I sound like an idiot. And now they come out and they lay this terrible effort game. And Kirk throws the check down with fourth and eight. Jeremiah, you know the agreement. Don't ever throw that check down on fourth down. I swear to God, don't do it. And he did. And I think we were all just so, I think his old team was like, wait, what? No, what? But even the check, it wasn't as much even the check down, you know, and it's hard for me to even lay the whole blame at Kirk Cousins' feet. Oh, never. No. You can't. You just have to look at like what Ed Donatell put out there on that defensive side okay. of the ball and just be like, that offense, those guys, like, yeah. st- I don't even know half the people on that team. And yet we just still, as we have all year, the middle of the field is just the biggest wide open hole of yeah. all time. You know, it's almost as big as those shrimp cocktails that they have <laughs> at St. Elmo's oh. in Indianapolis where you're just going to buy me. All uh, the dinner and all and the steaks. Each, each shrimp is $14, oh, and it's, it's a six shrimp minimum, too. It's Dude, fantastic. All I know yes. is St. Elmo's better help me on this bill, especially for <laughs> what I was talking about. It's going to be so much fun. Triple <laughs> old fashions. Let's start list. the night strong. No, yeah, the that, that's list. the thing. My wife goes, 
hey, everyone's come to me and like, I said that your husband's going to be so <laughs> mad he lost this bet. What's this bet? And she came to me like, what is this bet? I was like, you don't want to know. It's going to be bad, really bad. bad. Hey, I, I, knew it, I knew it wasn't going to be bad if I lost because you, you don't drink. But oh, me, on the other hand, I'm going to be at the combine. It's going to be a happy time because our guy is just going to be crushing it there. And it's, it's just going to be old-fashioned Manhattans. Oh, nice, oh. neat Manhattan. Oh, talk dirty. I'm going to need yes. some help, somebody. No, this is <laughs> somebody our, this is better our, bail me out of this. Our food porn, se- food porn segment starting early tonight. It sure is. Yes, some Cajun hash browns. Oh, get some. Stop it. Hey, Mackie, are you going to be there? We're talking about J.D. Hoyts. No. <laughs> you going to come to the combine, too? I will not be, be at the You should. I, uh, you should, we, we have not talked to the audience much about this, but old Macadac is planning a little a little move that we'll talk more about soon, and that may happen in February. We'll we'll talk more about that on Purple Daily at some point. Well, good thing old the combine's Macadac in March. Be, uh... Yeah, so you can. No, I thought it was in February. Out. Did they move? No, they moved March, to March. March first. Old Macadac might be in there. I guess, well, <laughs> Dude, you especially if Boone's paying for God's sake. I'll pay for you. Come for sure. Just you two, though. That's it. <laughs> so okay, since I've got you guys yeah. and. Uh, and you guys had different viewpoints going into this game, but it sounds like you're both pissed about the same things yeah. on behalf of the Vikings coming out of it. What is the number one thing that had you just sort of pounding your head against a desk after that game was over? I want to start with Jeremiah. Mm. You know, the number one thing for me was just I felt like it was more of the same. Um, of I looked at 2017, and I now look at 2022, and I'm like, what was the difference? You know, like we we on. I guess you look at this now and you go, okay, in 2017, we finished the season, we went to the NFC Championship, and everybody went, we're a quarterback away. We're just, we're so close, right? We're, we're one piece away from being a Super Bowl contender, a Super Bowl winner, and the whole bit. And then we leave this game on Sunday, and I'm going, we are so far away. Right. We're mm. so far away. And that makes me pound my head against the wall because it feels like we had a wasted opportunity over the last few years. Um, and I know this is the first year for this is the first year for KOC and crew. But, you know, to look at what we had on this team and the potential that was on and to win the all the games. And it was fun. It was everything. But the result was the exact same. We went one into the playoffs and we got beat by a fifth seed on a home game. You know, and so it's just like, what was the difference? What changed? And that's why for me personally, I feel like you got to blow the whole thing up. And so I know that I don't love that the idea as a player. I hate that if I'm on the Vikings and I hear someone say that, I'll be like, this sucks. But from the outside perspective, looking in, it's just like if we want something different, you got to blow the whole thing up because it's the exact same thing over and over. I feel like ownership, I think this has been my biggest beef with generally, and maybe you guys would have a different thought on this. I think the Wilfs, they're not like meddlers, sometimes to a fault. Like, you know, Alex, we were talking a year, year and a half ago, and sometimes it's like, are they just in New Jersey for three right. months? Are they ever here? Do they but, even care? But generally, like, they provide resources. They green light big moves. Going back to the Brett Favre thing from, like, 12 years ago, too. I think they have an obsession with wanting to be relevant annually at the expense of building a monster championship caliber team. Like, they'd rather cling to a team that could go eight, nine, ten wins, get in and see what happens. I've even heard the ownership talk about, you just got to get in and see what happens. I don't think, I don't know, like, I don't think, the NHL is a sport where if you can just kind of get in, get a hot goalie, you might be able to win the cup. I don't think you just get in and then beat the you know four of the best teams in the NFL, maybe two or three of those games not at home. So I don't know that the organization, which by the way, I think you know it's been 60 plus years this franchise has been in existence. If you take the first five years of expansion off the table, they've only had like four or five train wreck seasons in franchise history where it's like three or four wins. So they've just been so obsessed with wanting to not be a bottom feeding team that they're willing to push, you know, let's restructure 32 year old players and just keep kicking the can down the road. And then you look at the Chicago Bears, and I'd rather be the Vikings than the Bears in a lot of ways, but the Bears swallowed hard. They have a hundred plus million dollars in cap space. They have the number one overall pick. They got a bunch of other assets they can they can use. They're sitting um, pretty. You know, so it's do you keep trying to push forward and no. doing this thing with veterans or do you like no. Jeremiah saying, do you strip it back? It's 100% right. You have to strip it. You have to strip it all the way down. And I think it will organically happen, especially because Jeremiah, you know how a new coach comes in and eventually it's like, listen, these are my guys. I really I don't care about any of them. And then at some point I may have even been as drastic. And this is why I told everybody that Jeremiah was always the one that called me down. I was like, someone, dude, had to. You, I was like, dude, you definitely got to blow it up. And someone's like, well, how far? I'm like, dude, you might even have to get rid of Kirk. Like, just, dude, my dude, I'm sorry. We can't anymore. We just can't. However we do this, 
it's too much. And you do look at Justin Jefferson and you think Stefan Diggs was not that far away, right? And all of a sudden, here we go again. And it's like, hey, man, he checked it down. He didn't even <laughs> throw it to me. He could have just thrown it to me. And at some point, you look back and go, he wasn't wrong when he said he was getting harassed horrifically by the D-line and he was close to getting smeared across the board. But at some point, you just have to throw it up to him and say, dude, please just catch it. Like in Buffalo, right? Like, mm-hmm. dude, just do something for me, please. And that's my biggest fear, especially with a new coach. And you have this phenomenal player. And the other thing I took away was, too, the creativity was not there. There was nothing that I was like, dude, this – this." remember when the Rams played in the Super Bowl against – the last one. Who was it against? Um, uh, the Patriots. The no, Patriots. And the creativity of like oh, four oh, by one. You're talking about no. literally last year. My bad. No. Yeah, yeah. Who was? <laughs> that was the Ram. No, the Bengals. Yeah. Remember yeah, when they yeah. played the Bengals? Yes. <laughs> yes, we all forgot. I know. Believe me. C-T- me and Jeremiah have been grinding. So much, so much different tape right now, Jeremiah. I watched so much tape with the boys today. It was insane. But anyways, we watched all these games. College games. But... The point is, the creativity of that game was like, oh, my God. Like, I remember we talked about it, I think, on on Purple Daily for, like, three shows about all the different ways that they came at the Bengals and all the different ways that they exploited them. And look what they did in this four-by-one. And, and the one side happened to be Tyler Higby, who's this tight end that you probably are going to underestimate, and he's going to make you pay a couple times. And then all of a sudden it was OBJ and the way that they just kept moving guys around. And it was just like, when's that going to happen? When are you going to pull that out of your ass? Or if anything, when are you just going to continue to give it to Dalvin and punish somebody? Like at some point, the identity of the team went away to me. And all of a sudden, it just looked like a team that was out there trying to survive. And they were trying to keep up. And it was like, that's not playoff football. You're not meeting this halfway. And you, this is, to me, why I would turn around and was like, kind of is fraudulent. Like, I see what everyone's saying now. I didn't see that all year because the offense was so dominant. And at times they got shut down like every team does. But then you go into the playoffs and you're like, all right, they're going to kick it into full gear. Like I was in my mind like this is going to be their best game. And it ended up being their worst in my mind. Well, offensively, not as much. But, you know, here's here's where I'm starting to look at the league, Alex. You know, I look at the league and I'm going, where's the league going, right? And you're looking at the days of Kirk Cousins and Tom Brady and Matt Ryan and these true pocket statue can deliver the great ball all over the field. That's just not where the league is going. Look no. at who's left in the quarterbacks in the Agreed. playoffs, right? Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow. Daniel like Jones. these dudes can create with their legs. Right. Like, and it's not about like, oh wow, look how fast like um Jalen Hurts is. It's it's the ability to move and move efficiently with your eyes downfield. Right. right? The time that, he creates. The time he creates, yes, the ability because the werewolves on the edges are getting better. Right. The defensive linemen are getting faster. The offensive lineman play is getting worse. And so you're like, okay, well, how do we combat that? Well, you have a guy that you say, hey, you're going to play man coverage like Daniel Jones. Oh, sweet. Middle of the field's open. I'll take 10. Yeah. I'll take 15. Right. And speed, speed, but that's can't do that. But to be, to be honest with you, you know who the first one to kind of start that one was Russ. Because Russ was the one that could run around and look downfield and still deliver these amazing balls and still be accurate and still mm-hmm. be reading a defense. And then all of a sudden everybody was like, hey, they don't even have that good of an O-line. I'll tell you what, this will work. We'll pour a bunch of money into the skill players. We'll figure out what we can do up front. And it's exactly where they – you look at everybody in the playoffs right now and they're all offensive-minded coaches. They're all these guys that are like, how do we push the ball down the field? How do we create space between our quarterback and, like Jeremiah said, the werewolves? These is, this is everything that's going on right now. And that, to me, is why I'm like, dude, at some point – You might just have to be like, dude, you got to go. I'm sorry. We're going to trade you. We're going to cut you. I don't care. We have to figure out a way because this is not going to succeed next year either because you're right. You need somebody to create space, time. Let Justin Jefferson get open. Like At some point, not every catch should be contested as much as it was this year. You know what I'm saying? You know, the the Kirk thing too, it's it's so hard because I feel like people fall into the trap of, well, you can't – the the Giants game is a perfect example – yeah. Well, he's not to blame. You know, the argument is always like, who's to blame? The, 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 you can't blame the season on Kirk. You can't blame that game on Kirk. And I agree. I mean, Kirk played pretty well. Like Kirk, mm-hmm. yeah. Kirk had his best playoff game and maybe one of his like three or four best games of the season. But it's, and I hate to keep going back to money, but it's a strategic thing that matters. I mean, when you have a guy that is taking up yeah. like fifteen to twenty percent of the team allocation and salary cap. He needs to be the solution more than he is, and that's been my beef. Well, you're blaming Kirk. No, but there are certain moments, and he and he bailed the Vikings out more this year than he had at any Agreed. point in the in the four years Agreed. before that. 
Um, but like you said off the top of the show, Boone, the two narratives that persisted were the Vikings are frauds and Kirk can't win the biggest games. And that's and at the end of the day, you're still left saying, yeah, I guess the Vikings kind of were frauds. And boy, I guess I don't know if Kirk can win the big game. Or maybe the better phrasing is, I don't know if the Vikings or any team as constructed in 2023 paying a non-elite, non-mobile quarterback the third most money to the cap and that well, now it's on the front office. You got to put an offensive line and a defense. Yeah, but then you have to draft perfectly, and right. free agents have to be perfect. It's almost an impossible task in 2023. That's my beef. No, you're you're 100 right. You know, and when you peer behind the curtain, and I got into this with Collier Show. You know, when you peer behind the curtain of what it takes to build a dominant NFL team, it's so hard. It's it so hard. And like that's why, like when George Payton left, and he's got his own like yeah. Denver's kind of in shambles. But like when George Payton left the Vikings, I was like, man, I wonder who steps into that role because he was a wizard with that. You know, and also Quazy and KOC are going to have to deal with the the sins of their fathers being Rick Spielman of like, kick the can down the road, right? Like extend Harrison Smith, extend these guys, kick it all. Eventually you're going to sit there going, that's money I have to spend and is already spent. And now I can't build around Kirk, right? So it's not just what is Kirk done on the field and in between the white lines. It's what is he costing the other 52 positions? What does it look like? If you're going to build a team, it can't be focused around, like you said, if he's not the solution, if he can't erase everything, then why are you paying him what you are? Like, you're just hurting your football team. Right. And you're going to live like- in perpetual 8-9 and nine or 9-8, nine and eight, and eventually you'll win a 13, and then it's – to be the same result exactly there's like, like they, three but there's like but, three or four quarterbacks that i would pay anything to otherwise i'd rather just have like like it's a team sport and if yeah. if i can get a rookie scale contract quarterback and build the rest of my roster i don't want the third category look which at jacksonville is the but look, look at, at the ravens at times huntley was on fire dude when lamar stop, went down stop but you're, that you're better was than that you're maybe better that than was that. last year you're better maybe than that, that. huntley year. dude i know rookies no, i can start yeah. over huntley right now yeah. not even close that was that was so bad no but like cooper rush there you go I'll give you that one. Cooper Rush for Dallas, right? The dude walks in and starts, and he plays, and he wins five games. Well, Brock Purdy is probably the ultimate. There you go. There you go. There's a great That's one. That's one Brock we can Purdy. all agree on right there. All right. Just, but that, to be honest, that is a very quarterback-friendly offense, Jeremiah. We've talked about that. Like, all you're doing is <laughs> handing the ball off or throwing to Debo and Kittle. <laughs> like, dude, you really can't fail. You're right, though, Mackie. You're 100% yeah. right. I mean, and that's why even with uh, Cincinnati, right, they asked Joe Burrow the question that everyone may, like, put on thing: is this your Super Bowl win? And he's like, well, it's my whole career. It's like, yes, I understand that. But your whole career, you're not going to have T. Higgins, Jamar right. Chase, Joe Mixon. Like, People got to get paid in this league. It's why we play this game. We wouldn't right. play this game for left. We're like, oh, we just want to win. No, we want to get paid. We like right. we, we eventually won't be able to do this. And so when you look at the Vikings, everyone's already gotten paid. So therefore, everyone is being paid. Therefore, right. you have no money. So that's why I'm a big component of like, listen, blow it up. And it starts with Kirk. Trade him. Yep. Let him play you his last to. deal out, whatever it is, because wow. you're just going to have to kick the can down the road again. And I'll tell you this, Kirk Cousins agent. Hats off to you, man. You've had oh, the Vikings. Dude. You've had the Vikings with their balls and a vice grip for the last Literally. five years. And He's every probably time, talking to his wife, like, "Oh my God, it's them again." <laughs> oh, they want, they want well, two more years. Well, it's think crazy. about it. If I'm Kirk's agent, right, I'm calling him in. Like, he had his best statistical year. He won you 13 games. Extend him. Like, because it, it, they don't care. It's not about what the team does at that point. It's a, it's yeah. an individual basis. So you know, for so many years, he's just been able to twist the balls and pull. And I just don't think the Vikings can do that anymore. They might yeah. just have to let a Kirk walk. Who It's hard to do, and it's hard to imagine as a Vikings fan. But if you want to look at three, four years of what this team looks like, that's where it all has to start and end is with Kirk Cousins. Mm. Dude, you guys are so – see, I've, I've been teetering on this. You guys, have, you guys have crystallized it for me, I think, on there too. I can't believe we haven't even talked about this and we agreed on that completely. I mean, mm. it just makes sense. Like the totally. economics, the economics of a football team is – it, it's not hard anymore to look at what's successful. Young quarterbacks before they get paid, and you have right. to not pay anyone else. Yeah, and you but can not only and, that, but what you also don't want to get the reputation of like being the eight and nine team, the guys that are just okay with being eight and nine. Like, dude, look at the quarterback. You really want to go there and waste a year of your, you know, what I'm saying there's there's times where you're like, dude, it's just I don't want to be a part of that. I'm sorry. Also, Kirk needs to go find a 2018 Vikings. Go find a situation where you just get plopped. And you're ready for a winning team. That's, I don't that think, was the year. Of the five years he's been here, that was, that was the ready-made dude, year. 2018, Who would it be, though? that team was stacked. Are you kidding mm-hmm. me? Literally, everyone had convinced themselves. You had Everson, Linville, like everyone still. Then they were what? What were they that year? 
eight and eight. They went yeah. eight and eight. They missed the playoffs that yeah. year, and, and then and it all was, just blew up from there. Yeah, yeah. and they and you know well, but the, but John D. Filippo was a train wreck trash. offensive coordinator, and the he offensive trash, line. Right? This yeah, it's I like forgot about and those him. things. I are always true, forget but... he was here. Were you here with him, Jeremiah? <laughs> no, I was gone. Oh. But I just loved dude. And Collier said it on the show. He loved the fact that Zimmer literally was like the one guy was like. You will not ruin my life. You're gone, right? Like he, he, he did it. He was just like, I can't handle you anymore. You're gone. Back You're to your question, here, Boone, of who who does Kurt go to? I think it's the Jets or the Raiders. Ooh, the Raiders. Ooh. So, but Tom, so Tom Brady's domino has to fall first, right? Because there's steam. That He's going to go to Indianapolis, go. where all the old quarterbacks go to die. I mean, but that's... Do, but but don't old uh, showmen go to do their residency in Las Vegas? Uh, yeah. Josh McDaniels. You never know, dude. Uh, they got to sell some some expensive Dude, lucrative imagine, uh, season tickets. Imagine pack. Brady, Brady, and uh, Devontae Adams. That could get scary. the best receiver he's if, had since two thousand seven. Yeah. I mean, two thousand nine. And if they keep somehow keep Josh Jacobs too, and then you put Darren. Ooh, I'm liking this. The Darren more we Waller talk about this. That defense yeah. too, though. That defense is actually very good when they're healthy. Yeah. Can you imagine that division would then have whatever <sighs> left of Russell Wilson? If if there's if Sean the Payton can of, revive him, <laughs> the ghost of Wilson passed. Dude, You'd have Mahomes, Herbert, and Tom Brady. Really in interesting. Division. I love Herbert. I think Herbert's an absolute. <laughs> oh, dude, Justin's a monster. Dude, I'll tell you what though. I think the biggest problem is going to be Denver in that situation. If Tom does end up going there, dude, they're going to be. They're going to be playing catch up again. Well, they have the same problems. The Vikings. What are you going to do? You just paid Russell Wilson a quarter of a that's, quarter that's, of a million dollars. Like what? That's Ooh. different. That could have been a lot of things. That could have been the synergy between him and Hackett. That could have been a lot of things, right? Like, you still a Russ believer? Oh, you were I'm with a, him in Seattle. You were with him in Seattle. I'm, that, I'm, that doesn't I'm count. up and down about it. I mean, dude, I was just told, telling uh, Mackie that uh, Billy Turner came in today to talk to the boys. Mm-hmm. He was telling them about everything, and I was just like, dude. Sometimes you just don't have the right vibe on a team, and it comes from the top down, in my opinion. And you know, at some to- at some point, you have to change it up. And I think that if you get a guy like Sean Payton in there, it could change the game, dude. Like, are you giving up a first rounder for Sean Payton? Absolutely. You might not- have to. You dude, might. It's and a, Mackie, it, it, how you funny, might have to. How many months ago did I text you that little clip where he was like, "Well, if I." Was Russell Wilson's coach? I would. I'd do go pull this. the thirty, his the thirty the, best deep ball plays, and yes. say, "Which of these do you want to do? Tell me how you want to run them." It, show it was me like everything. he was saying, "Hey, uh, George here. and new ownership. Here's <laughs> like what to pay I people? would do, hypothetically speaking. Just oh, yeah. a total theory. For sure. Hint, hint, <laughs> wink, wink. By the way, if I'm Sean Payton, I'm also going in there. Like, by the way, that office upstairs that you have is gone. It is, <laughs> you are back downstairs. You are like everybody else. You go downstairs. You're not allowed up here to talk to us. Like, dude, you got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're getting a little crazy, man. Um, we do have to. I, I did lie to the audience 25 minutes ago, and I said we won't make you wait 30 minutes to dive into we film. Did. But then Jeremiah Sorry, Cyril's bro, came I, in. I apologize. I apologize. So you're. Uh, we don't want to keep you all night unless you want to hang and uh, break some film down. Otherwise, we can. I got get, get you on to get some time. I got nowhere to be. You know, I love some film. I'll watch all some right. tape. Let's do it. Then let's do it. Couple things real quick. Uh, you can find Jeremiah. We, is it still weekly with Matthew Collar on Purple yep. Insider during the yep. season? Yeah, okay. Tuesday morning left guard. We record on Tuesdays. Uh, you know, we're going Vikings. We're going to go all the way through the playoffs this year. Um, they're on Purple Insider, and we do some fun stuff over there. So check that out, Purple Insider, uh, Apple, Spotify, it's part of the Blue Wire over. Like, podcast all of us network. Just get on together. And it go would at be it. fun. I'm in. <laughs> just total. I'm super I'm down. In. Dude, super it would dope. Be total anarchy, like cage match. Just dope. <laughs> we'd have to have one of those guys that has the mute button though, so that for sure. Someone say, gets someone's to talk. Gotta mute everybody. <laughs> A Tony Realia. That can be me, I guess. I'll just hit the mute button. Hey, we should it. do that before Shut the Super up. Bowl. A big crossover. I'm in. Let's, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I do want to shout out one of our new partners here on Purple Daily, Vivrant. And so I, uh, we're, we're talking about the Giants defense carving up, uh, or I guess it would be the Giants offense carving up the Vikings defense. Yeah. So I recently discovered an amazing new service here in Vivrant. Online knife sharpening, gentlemen. And Alex, Ooh. you've uh, you're slicing up your pies there. You're a master of the kitchen. Jeremiah saw me cooking. I cook yeah. every night. I love Jeremiah it. looks like a, a guy who slices uh, brisket or something. Deer. I'm. I'm. Do I butcher deer? deer? Yeah. Oh, dude. Deer hey. geese. He called me this morning. I was in a. I, I was in a morning. duck blind. I got geese cutting up. And yeah, I love. I call knives. him every morning on the knives. drive in, and here he is answering in a total duck blind. What's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love so, knives. If you've never had your, and so obviously like most of America has knives, but most people have it, you get your knives and then you just have them and then they get dull and whatever. Um, so Vivrant allows you to, what they do is they send you packaging that's safe for the mailman. 
you send back your knives, they send you replacement knives, they sharpen them professionally and send them back in just a few days. Mm-hmm. So my wife and I have gotten into, we're not like great in the kitchen, but we're saying, let's make 2023 the year that we discover new ways to cook, new ways to be healthier, I guess, in the kitchen. And Vivrant has helped spark that. Uh, keyword sharp on scorenorth.com or just go to vivrant.com, V-I-V-R-O-N-T, Dot com. The first 100 Score North listeners to use the promo code SCORE, S-K-O-R, will receive a free vegetable peeler in addition to your knife sharpening. So, uh, Dude, there you have Jeremiah, it, I can't wait Football. to see if you like the plays that I picked today. Dude, I had like 50 plays picked, and then I was like, we can't watch all of these. So I had to narrow it down. Well, I do so feel like we have to You just pull them up, and I'll tell start. you why we're talking about it. Don't Let's start with this. You to the fourth Are you going to start? You're going to start no, with that. Play? Don't, don't end with it. You don't want to start with it. Do you? What do you want? Do you, okay. Do you want to do Just things that one. the things that the Giants did to the Vikings, or things that the Vikings did start well? Start with the trap. The start with the trap. This play, mm, I love traps. Beautiful. Boys asked me the other day oh, what's my so favorite play, nice. and I told him trap. Oh, and trap. wait till you see oh, this play. Get it. it is so because he spins, dude. Oh my god! I was like, what are you doing? All right, so I'm going to run this for the audience here. By the way, if you're listening right now, this is a good time to pop over to the Purple Daily YouTube channel around the 30-minute mark here. Uh, We will run this for the audience, and then you guys can tell us. This is the play before. Ignore this, by the way. I didn't didn't edit these very well because you gave me 13 plays. So, (laughs) I'm dude, I'm addicted. I had one hour to do 13 plays. You could just see how they were carving out this team, and I was driving me nuts. Okay, so listen. This is a this is a beautiful trap. I love when traps hit. Because they're so quick hitting, and the defense has no idea what hit them. And it gets run out of this front, which is obviously an over. There's our three technique, Harrison Phillips. Go back right there. Boom, boom, 97. And it's very simple. We're going to fake this deuce, right? And you might even get a deuce-deuce call. And I love that the tackle's in a three-point because that sells it even more. And you're both going to fake step at them. And, Jeremiah, you were here last week when we practiced the deuce steps. Mm -hmm. You're, it's basically a reverse do steps. So you're going to step at him right away, and then you're going to step out, both of them. Tight end's going to block out, and you're both going to basically swim him, and you go to the backers, and it's super fast hitting. Yeah, you don't, you don't even really block 55 in this play. He blocks himself. No. Um, you know, the great piece about this is you set this play up. You know, you let this play go. You see these two guys, like, 97's a known penetrator. He has been always. Yeah. So they've watched this on tape, and they go, okay, we're going to run power. We're going to double-team this guy. We're going to do these things. And then all of a sudden, we're just going to change it up one time. And now that slows him down for the rest of the game. It makes him think, for his pass rush, am I getting trapped again? Am I getting killed? Right, like, he's stumbling here. He has no control of his body because he thinks he's but getting see, hit. See how um, Andrews is stepping at him, and then he steps away from him, and he kind of swats at him? And Harrison has no idea. He's originally trying to go at the guard and then the tackle. And he's like, where's everybody going? And before he knows it, <laughs> Lewinsky's right on him. I mean, dude, it's so if you can run right it here. properly, it is such a fun play because it's so fast. And you get on everybody and you still get a shot on the three technique. Like Jeremiah said, this slows him down now the rest of the game, right? Look at that. He had no idea that was coming. All of a sudden, you get Saquon on Harrison. Ooh, spare Harrison. God, dude, yeah, I know, bro. It's, I know, man. Cycle. I know. I'm sorry. It's uh, time. It's time. Oh, God. That's Pat P's going to fake a tackle. No, he gets, he gets, oh, here's tackle. He gets, he gets credit for that tackle. He, corral, oh, okay. he, corrals, he corrals him. Okay, you're right. Not all tackles are productive, by the way. I mean, this did save a <laughs> touchdown, maybe. But this is uh, 20 yards down the field. After I mean, game. they basically just slowed the inevitable is what they did here. This, I mean, look at this. This is the center. This is clinic tape. I mean, this it, is it really this is. is a literal like when you when they install this play during OTAs and training camp <laughs> next year, they're gonna be like, all right, here, here's the play, here's the play. Now let's watch it on tape. Boom. Every team, every team. So can, in the can NFL. you run? If so, how many times did they run this? Can you run this play more than once, or does if you do it, does a team figure you, out what you're? I think if you run it once, you have to wait a while because if you try to run it again, like we said, the three technique is extremely savvy. So now he's going to be guessing every single time, like, are they really reducing? So if you run it in the first quarter, you could probably pull it off again in the fourth. But other than that, I mean, these guys are smart enough to know if you could be twice on this trap, there's going to be some ass to get chewed. Like, no joke. Not, nobody was happy about this. This is also one of those plays that you have dialed up in the perfect situation, right? Like, yeah. you see where they're at in the field. They're in the high red. Right, so this is one of those where they saw on tape, hey, the high this, red. Because you, you need, sounder for that. You need what? Two linebackers in the box, yeah, so they know. Two, 
Yeah, they know it's high red zone. They're going to line up when we go into this formation. They're going to line up in this coverage. And if we get this look, we're going to run this play. And then when it works like that, man, mwah, beautiful. Oh, dude, I've had some traps hit so hard. And you're like, yes. Three technique is definitely getting slowed down today. Mm. Yeah, Did you pull here. up the uh, – what you this got is a da- This is the one of the Daniel Jones. I'm going to run this. You can see, and then we'll get to the, uh, the end zone cam here. Daniel see. Jones, one of the many times he – broke free for chunks of yardage yeah this is my biggest problem with this whole freaking game dude like you got the quarterback running down the middle of the field you cannot win a playoff game like this and going into the game like you have to know as a defensive line we have to contain him in the pocket i mean playing a guy like kyler murray it's very similar jalen hurts like everyone's always trying to do it they're trying to keep the quarterback inside this pocket and when you let him just run up the middle like that dude it's demoralizing it's making it easy on them as well they had a bunch of designed runs with him. This did not look like a designed run it here, wasn't. but but I guess when the middle of the field opens up like that, it's kind of a no-brainer for him, right? It also kind of felt like just watching from my couch, uh, you know, in my elastic bottom sweatpants, the Vikings, all due respect to Eric Kendricks, who might be a Vikings Ring of Honor guy, and Jordan Hicks led the league in tackles a couple of years ago, but like those dudes looked so slow in this game. Yeah. I feel like the new Vikings logo is going to be like Jordan Hicks trailing six yards behind a tight end or a running back trying to catch him over the field or Daniel Jones after this game. It I was mean, not, it was just not the best performance from the D line. I mean, right away, we get pressure and then the middle. See how it just opens up? Got to make that tackle. So Can't is there no is there no spy on Daniel Jones? No, What's, I think especially with this skills, you're not you don't have time to waste a guy, right? And you're not thinking. That's why you go into the game telling the D line, listen, that no point can this guy get running because if he does, it, have you ever really seen him from the other angle when he's running? It looks like he's effortlessly running through the middle of the field. Yeah. And this this is like a what eighteen yard play. I mean, just uh, these huge chunk plays keep happening over and over, and you're allowing the quarterback to sit back there in the pocket and then just run through the middle of your defense. I mean, it's – where's the ball? 25? I mean, if if you really want to pin this on someone, I mean, if you look at it and you go back there to the beginning there of Mackey, you know, this is is one of those plays I was talking about where, like, this is man coverage across the board, right? You can (laughs) see the corners are pressed. Harrison runs out with Saquon. Like this is this is so easy for an opposing offense to be like, oh, they're in man coverage, and then I know that I have two crossers, right. and they're going to run to the sidelines, and I know I have two outsides. Like the guy that is responsible for Daniel Jones is standing on the Viking logo right now. Right. No, oh, gotcha, gotcha. You know, I mean, like he, yeah, he's got to push out to the flat because he has this whole coverage area here, and he feels the crosser coming behind him, number eighty-four coming behind him. Right, he, he feels knows. that, so he knows he sees one crosser go. That means another's coming underneath. So he's trying to sink back into that window to take 84. The guy that's responsible for Daniel Jones is standing on the Viking logo at 40 yards away. Right. You know, like that's such an easy – that's his first read. I promise you, he looked out to see if the out was open over there on their near sideline, and that wasn't there. He's like, okay, tuck it and go. Like that's what Daybold used to do with Josh when I was there with him when he was a rookie, right? He'd be like, dude, if they ran coverage, they're uncovered, you tuck it and go. Like I know Daniel Jones is not a rookie, but like his success this year is very similar to Josh Allen's success his first year with Daybold. It is. What was the year where the Bills came in as underdogs to U.S. Bank 2018, Stadium? 2018. It was the week before so I you were there. It. It you was were the there week. with Buffalo? I was sitting in the airport flying to Buffalo okay. while they were playing that Vikings game when they were 21-point dogs. Amazing. Um, That's another so one. what do we got here? Again, terrible Same edit one. job by me. But this is, uh, this is actually – all right, this is another Daniel Jones play. I'm going to run this. This is a ton of – looks like a ton of motion here. Oh, no, it's this play, dude, run. this play hits so hard. Go to the back end zone. Jeremiah, I'm stealing this play from my sixth grade next year. <laughs> this, Me and the boys watched this in the gym today. I was like, this hits so hard. Check this out. All right, so this is an even front. We're in a nickel defense. Go ahead, let him let him go across. All right, check this out. This is like what G-Row used to say back in the day, two ships in the night. And what you have here is a Y hide. You have two Y hides happening at the same time. One's faking this motion right here. There he is right there. He's going to fake that right there. And he's reading the end. See how he's going down and falling? So now he knows I have this Y hide coming with me across to come block. So we faked a jet sweep, a blunt. We used to call it blunt. It's really a zone. And at the same time, I have an arcer for me on the outside. And there's Zadarius Smith on the field. Like, dude, it's just not. This is a 
dabble <laughs> offense if I've ever seen one. Guys are constantly – they actually got called for a uh, illegal motion on this down by the end zone. He scored. That's the, right. 82 went in motion before. And just the way that this looks to the defense, I mean, look how many guys are going and <laughs> – <laughs> Look at Eric Kendricks. Kendricks. He doesn't know what where do to you go. Th- you he, have has no, no idea. he has no chance. He has no this chance. Is, this is the creativity that I was talking about all year that I was expecting to see with KOC. Look how many guys are going in different directions, and Kendricks has no idea. Look at the middle of the field is completely open if you were to cut dude, this up. Dude, look like, at the cut by Daniel Jones here, by the way. Look at this athlete. cut. Athlete. He is an athlete. He ran 96 yards down the sideline against Washington last year. Like, everybody sleeps on how good he is. Or he tripped and fell. <laughs> yeah, right? And they all made fun of him. But still, he's an athlete, dude. And he, that play was super sick. So here's what's funny. So late, I think it's later on this drive. They get down. You're, you're right. They scored a touchdown, and they got called for illegal motion. So mm-hmm. they're like, okay, oh, yeah. gosh. Well, that was a good play design. What should we uh, What should we drop next? We just kind of burned a creative play design. So, uh I don't know. Was this it? Let's fire this one up and see what happens. Tell me it was the Statue of Liberty. Dude, yes. Dude, I cannot believe <laughs> I he pulled so this out. I was so happy he did I got this. so excited. I go, I'm rooting for the wrong team at this point. <laughs> look at this. Like, look at the creativity. This well, is what I love about Dabble, dude. Like he, One time, I was trying to figure out his offense, and he, they asked him in an interview. They were like, can you explain your offense? He's like, no, I can't. I can't at all. Like, it's just everything all at once. You never know what you're going to get. And that's exactly when you pull the Statue of Liberty out after getting a touchdown called back, you're basically I don't like, I don't give a shit anymore. I'm going to show you everything to win this game to prove that we are not the frauds and that you are. And this Statue is just of Liberty. It's awesome because it's Saquon that goes in motion in this like arc swing motion. And you know the defense is like, holy shit, where's he going? What are they doing? Because that was the whole game was either Daniel Jones throwing the ball or them giving it to Saquon. Dude, he's one arm tackle away from scoring here. He really is. Look at this. Like if if, if Dalvin Thomason doesn't get his big old mid on him right here, like he might he he probably scores. This is mm. oh, man. That's oh. so good. It really is. This is that's dude. That's I mean I haven't seen someone run the Statue of Liberty since Oklahoma Boise in a right? long like, time. <laughs> and I boys. remember sitting in my living room in a high school kid watching watching it, that game because right? it was so good, man. How about I met that running back? I played in the All Star game with him, and I yeah. asked him about it. He was like, "Bro, craziest thing ever!" Right? And then all of a sudden, the Philly special trumped that. Like, dude, it's it's stuff like that that makes it fun. And when you hire a guy like KOC, you're like expecting to see that all the time. Like, dude, pull your creativity out. At some point, you're not going to be the most talented team on the field show me what you can do use what you have that was a great example of it Booney, i think this next one is the saquon barkley catch you i don't know if you want to call it a screen yeah, or a, just like it's a swing screen go ahead pull it up it's okay. it's phenomenal it's exactly what they were trying to do the whole day this is how they expose the defense jeremiah you'll love this look at this three by one right mm-hmm. check this out Saquon runs through the middle of the offensive line, and he gets his one-on-one matchup. They ran this play three times. Does it? Okay, dumb question. Does uh, does a in some of these Daniel Jones runs too? You just again, you see Kendricks trailing on these. You see you see Hicks trailing on these. Those guys have a lot of wear and tear. They're both over the age of thirty. Do faster linebackers have a better chance, or is it more complicated schematically to stop some of this stuff? I think a lot of it falls into schematically, like they lined up. I think this was a man coverage, and it ended up getting Kendricks right on him, and then he runs into the drag route. Like the drag, there's three drags that come across. But to me, it was like the whole game they hadn't shown this formation. So the minute they lined up like this, it was like, man, this is this is new. What's this? And then all of a sudden, Saquon's running right through the middle, and you're like, oh, that's why they're doing. That's why they opened up the defense. And then all of a sudden, they came back like a quarter later, and they ran the same exact play. And it was like, they just opened you up again. Another piece of this is, you know, one of the reasons they did this is because they know the Vikings are terrified to blitz. They like, you know, because we have mm-hmm. Duke Shelley, we have, we don't have this stud starred back end. So they're like, okay, we know they're only going to send four. So we know that Saquon, we don't have to count you in the protection scheme. Like we know they're not going to send the sixth rusher. We're, we have five to block here. So Saquon, you have a free release. You see this is man coverage. Like if you know this is man, you have a free release on this guy. 
and just go make a miss, right? And then you have two crossers in face. It's just impossible to stop this unless you are truly just going and, and trying to go back. rush him. Go back to, I just noticed this. Another reason too is look at the guys rushing. Does anyone look out of place out of all these guys rushing? See how you got a big dude in there? 94. Yeah. They're in big nickel because they know that at some point they're going to try and run the ball, so they got to have a big guy in there to stop it. And to me, that's just another wasted – you should have a pass rusher out there. You're making this too easy for them. Like Jeremiah said, they know you're not going to blitz, and at the same point, you got a big guy in there who's not a pass rusher. But they don't have, they don't have another pass no, rusher. But now you wasted Zadarius. Look, who do you put you in? Put Patrick Jones in? Like, who I cares? You find somebody faster than that. <laughs> go, <laughs> dude, can you go? Can we go dust off John Randall? He was at the game, wasn't he? Uh, sure, you John, can throw put some hey, pads on, guys. Here's a great idea. Since you know you're not going to get home anyways, why not throw another DB on the field? Why not try and be creative? Throw a linebacker yeah. on the field. Just not somebody like this. Because look, now you waste Zadarius. See, now you're just sliding right to him. Daniel, got to show up here. Big hey, time. credit credit to Jordan Hicks. He sees what's happening. He does the uh, you got it, you got it. Or he's it just like, like, Dalvin, what are you doing out here, dude? <laughs> <laughs> get back, get back to this. You're not supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did run. They did run this, one key defensive this, play this. against the Packers, the third and eight with ten guys on the field. So it wouldn't that's be, man. true. We'll the first time the they were confused. We this is but like this. That was the theme right there of the day. That Saquon in that much space. Um, let's do, um, all right, let's go through some of the stuff that the Vikings actually did fairly well here. Let's see. That worked out, even it's though you guys, are blowing, the, you guys are definitely blowing gonna be on the, the team offensive up, so. side of the ball. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, there is a sack. He did, Booney, you did pull a sack of Daniel I Jones. I did. I think I got mad about it because I think they kept running the same overload front the whole game. They weren't blitzing. Yeah, they and just three on one home. side. Yeah, I'm like, dude, eventually the, somebody's going to go up there and be like, guys, they're running the same st- <laughs> This cannot get home. And it did. That's not possible. Why you got to put Ed Ingram on blast like this, dude? Dude, I put everybody on blast. Why do you got to make our producer First edit of all, that F-bomb out, too? <laughs> I told you everyone's working. First of all, huge <laughs> shout. Working. Huge shout out to Hawk, right? Dude just showed up. Like, his yeah. enthusiasm, it reminded me of Kittle. Like, as soon as he – because he, yeah. he caught this one. And then remember the one, Jeremiah, that they threw the fake smoke and he mm-hmm. ran the fade? And he got – and he knew he was about to just get obliterated. Yep. Just – Obliterate. He's still been, he was a huge addition. He huge was a huge addition. Good addition player, man. He finished second among tight ends in catches and also yard. He's 25 Dude, years it. old, too. He yeah, hey, by the, remember, Mackie, talking about getting paid. Someone's going to need to get extended. It's number 87. Yep, yeah, he's got one year left. There's a lot of guys that need to. That's why they need to start figuring it out quick. All right, go to the back end. This front drives me nuts because instead of blitzing, right, they showed this. And we talked about this in the gym. This is somewhat of a jam front just because all the core is covered. But basically, it's an overload front. We're going to 5-0 this always in the NFL because we always want to get the backs out, right? And two, we're in gone protection. So we're all double sorting. So number one, go back. Go back, go back, go back. All right, here we go. Ball snapped on the hash, right? Ed Ingram's foot should go completely vertical. This This twist has been happening the entire game. Instead, he goes out. Right? Go ahead. See how he goes out? See how 97's coming to him? This twist gets picked up way faster if you just go vertical on this. Now look at 99. He's also going in for Bradbury. He's coming to eat. I mean, he's coming to destroy. Now look at 36. See how he's coming around? Everybody's late to this party because Ed Ingram set out and not back. I will wow. say this. The center, Bradbury here, this is what you call, uh, I, won't, I won't make your producer edit out, but it's called F and your buddy here. You know, he, uh, he he throws a big fastball, right? He goes, oh, Dude. 97's coming here. If you don't flatten the penetrator, you're passing him to no one, right? Yeah. Like, you're not touching him. Like, he's already like, oh, I have to block 99, but his hand is on 97's back, right? Like, Ed Ingram, even if he went vertical here, I don't know if Ed Ingram has a chance. He would. Like, he would have. Look, dude, the ball was snapped on the hash. Look where, look where Lawrence is now. Yes, but I'm saying if you don't slow him down at all. No, I 90, agree. 97, but I agree. His set's awful. He needs to go straight vertical. Both of them. And both uh, of them. They both need to go straight vertical, but you can't just pass it to no one here. You, you what can't does it, just pass it to no what one. What does it mean? This has been a theme, not to not to like continue to dump on Ed Ingram, but we're literally sitting here after, after 19 games or 19 weeks, 18 games, talking about sets and mechanics that, I mean, Boone, you've been saying the same thing week after week. 
he he overextends or he takes the wrong first step they all or whatever. Do. What does that, but is that something that, oh, he'll clean that up for a year or two? Or is that a, a pretty big red flag at the end of your rookie season? You're still making some of those mistakes. No, I think, and it's a lot of what we've talked about before, is it's easy to talk about cleaning this stuff up. It's harder to do in the live situation. Dexter Lawrence is an all pro this year. Yeah. It's hard to line up and go, I'm going to do this exactly right. But at some point, it has to get cleaned up because look, your quarterback's on the ground. And it can't, that can't be the theme of the year. Oh, he delivers a great ball, but gets demolished when he throws it. And Jeremiah knows exactly what I'm talking about. Like some people are probably like, man, they're being really ticky tacky. But that's why you play in the NFL. You're not supposed to let your quarterback get hit. And when he does consistently, people get really pissed. And they're like, hey, man, what's going on? We've been getting the same twist the whole game. And you guys are really having struggles with it. Nobody's sending anyone off. Edding room setting out. Your center's not punching. Your left guard doesn't get a good punch on 99, which kind of causes him to wonder if the center's really there. Mm -hmm. See how he's kind of behind this? And now all of a sudden it's like, where is everybody? I'm late to the party. Like nobody's fully extended. Nobody's got depth. Kirk's kind of backing up the entire time. It's just not a good picture. And the defense starts to thrive off this. And Jeremiah will tell you better than anyone. When a defense starts getting close to the quarterback, they start getting really hungry. And they start picking up the pace. And they start laughing more. And they start having more fun. And it's like, man, we're in a bad situation right now. Yeah, I mean, hit, hit, sacks and quarterback hits are like hitting in baseball, right? Like, they come in bunches, right? Like, you you see your buddy getting a sack. Or you see, like, you want to get involved in that. So you ratchet it up. And then he ratchets up. Like that's why you can also see it go the other way. When you keep a when you keep a quarterback clean, like it frustrates a defensive line oh, yeah. beyond all. And belief. then we're laughing. Yeah, and then we're having fun, you know. So it's a pride yeah. thing too, you know. And I mean, Bradbury battled through a back injury still, and that's not easy oh. to do as an offensive lineman. Never, um, you know. So I mean, I, I was proud of the way he went out there and played, but there's just certain mechanical things. Back to your question, Mackie, of like I have to see a big jump in year one to year two to really understand and, and believe in what Chris Cooper is doing with this offensive line too. See the you know Boone and I were talking last week. It's like okay, what if your options at center here, knowing that interior pressure is is death to a non mobile quarterback, and Kirk mm -hmm. has done an incredible job just standing in and taking just hits, wearing and throwing it. darts, yes, and he's done a great job of that. But but we were basically saying okay, if if Garrett Bradbury says all right, I've you know I've been out for six weeks, I got into a car accident on top of the back stuff, but I'm gonna go 75%, 70%. Or no do you run Chris Reed out there for his third ever NFL game at center? Those are basically your two options in this game, right? I'm, I might be the only one that's like, Chris, if you're feeling good about this and you're gelling well with these dudes, we're rolling with that. I mean, you have, this was their defense. The interior D line was what everybody was like, man, these guys are, they're, they're jumping. They can get after no. the ball. They can make things really hurt. And, I, and like Jeremiah said, it's always so hard to like put into terms a back injury. But when you're playing O-line and your back's hurt, you have no strength. There were several times in this game that I was watching that you could see Bradbury was straining in pain. Like there was a lot. And it was like, dude, at some point he has no strength. He can't send a twist. He can't move guys in the run game. I mean, the run game alone was, a, was just getting obliterated because all the deuces and the bees kept getting left. Did you see that, Jeremiah? All the three mm -hmm. techniques kept getting left. And that, to me, is some of the dumbest things I've seen. You can never let the three technique go. Like, all of a sudden, the hole looked great, and then all of a sudden, some guy just showed up out of nowhere, and both guys were like, oh, you came off too? Oh, man. So did I. <laughs> funny thing, right? No, not funny, because Dalvin's like, bro, where'd everybody go? That's These things are showing up, and it's like, man, at some point, I might have been like, I'm rolling with Chris Reed just because he's 100% healthy and he's going to at least move mm. something out of there. I, I mean, I, I really think it's a coin flip. I think it's a coin flip of who you've tried out there. You know, you have your center that started a million games with Kirk Cousins in a playoff situation where every communication, every second on the shot clock matters. And, I mean, I'm sure there's still a PTSD for Cousins from Green Bay of like, hey, you, hey, snap it. I need the yeah. ball. We can't but play football home. without it's the different. It doesn't matter, though. If you're trying to check and do things, you're right. At home is different. That's But, you know, there's something about a, a center quarterback like relationship that there's a comfortability factor there. Yeah. To where, I mean, I think Cousins wanted Bradbury if he felt like he was even remotely okay to play. You know, this feels like a good time to mention again here. We've been hard on Kirk. Uh, you guys basically just jettisoned him from the team and blew the whole thing up. But we had a group. We had a group reach out to us. We've had Not the Cousins Crusaders and the Cousins <laughs> Haters. Okay. 
And uh, uh, our friends, the crazy Canadian Cousins Crusaders of Purple Daily, reached out a couple months back and said, what if we bring everyone together here, celebrate eight fourth quarter comebacks, celebrate 13 regular season wins, everyone can get behind donating to Kirk Charity. And so, yes, continue to go to KirkCousins.org and drop 5 bucks, 50 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever it is that you feel like uh, you can give. And then in the comment section of your donation, just say that you're one of the Cousins Crusaders of Purple Daily. You stand by your man going into the final year of his contract. I don't know if they the even stand by him anymore. Like, dude, <laughs> we sound really crazy. He threw the check down. He did it again. Ask for $8. <laughs> if he asks for $8, I'll send three. So here is, uh, this is another, uh, This is a, let's see, I think this is Kirk to TJ Hawkinson again. We'll run this play, and then you oh, guys can tell this us. this is beautiful. I oh, dude. Play. Look, at, he just, dude, he took so many hits, and he just kept getting up the whole game. This is what bothered me the most about this play. And, Jeremiah, you can speak to this as well. I look up here. I see a true odd front. There's three guys rushing. There are three guys rushing. There are five of you. Five of you. <laughs> okay? My dude should be able to bake a cake back there. Go ahead. Bake me a cake, Emerald. Let me see what we got. Let's see how much time we got to bake these cookies. This is the stuff that gets me so mad. Right? Number one. There we go. This looks good. We're good, right? Oh, boy. We got problems. We got some serious problems coming. Oh, Where's everybody going? Oh, man. Uh. Right? Where are we all going? Why don't we uh, double the all-pro, not trip our guard blocking him, and why don't we put the guard on the DB rushing 10 seconds late? Dude, this was almost dangerous for Kirk. Look at this. This is like, I know. Almost like a high dangerous for here. everyone. It was dangerous yeah. for Ezra. Look, he comes down, and I think the problem is he comes a little too far down. Like, at some point, you two are just locked right there. Stay right there, okay? Because what is the biggest problem we talk about? Pressure up the middle. It's universal. No quarterback likes pressure up the middle. And look when he throws that ball. Go back. Look where Dexter Lawrence is. Go back and pause it to like right when he's about to release. Because he's he sees this. If you think he doesn't see this, you're crazy. No, no, go forward. Wait, wait, keep going. We're getting close. Right? He's like, hey, Hawk, get open quick, bro. Because yeah. look, you see that right there? That's, That's my this is this is a problem though. This is the issue. He's There's about three. to step on Ezra Cleveland's head and <laughs> launch himself into Kirk Cousins. There's three guys rushing. This should not be happening. This is a mental oh. error on Ed Ingram, by the way. Huge. This, this, is, this is 100% a mental error on Ed Ingram. When you're in an odd front like this, we called it a double sort, or you know, you call it a, a triangle, right? So if you draw a triangle between the right tackle and the right guard and the left tackle and the left guard, right, you call it working the triangle. So 67 and 74 have one to two. In this picture, it would be 53 to 22, right? Number one is 53. Number two is 22. His eyes, 67's eyes, have to be locked on 22. And if he comes, you have to take him. And you see it. He knows it. 22, like, bumps Hawk, I believe, as is on his way out. And Ed Ingram's eyes completely vacate him. And that's when he triggers, and right? That's, that, that's a complete mental. Or not 34, excuse me. Whoever's out over number two, right? It can be yeah. 22 or anyone out there, really. It's anyone in that vicinity that comes inside your triangle. And 67 just loses him. He just completely doesn't look at it. And you see him at the last second, like, oh, shoot, that's my guy. So, you know, so, it's, it's easy to bag so Bra on Bradbury. So, Bradbury here. has to bail on one of the best players in the NFL yes. to cover yes. up for – Okay, that, that, to be Bradbury is trying to make it right here the best he can because this is not his man. No. And the mm. problem is, though, go back. The problem is Ezra comes too far down. And I think why is because, Jeremiah, they probably went hard Ron out there. Oh, because yeah, took four no, all the way over. Yeah, nobody's over here to the left because Ezra's coming down. And Bradbury, what he should do is they should cling together there, right? And then all of a sudden, like he said, Ed Ingram's taking, I think that's 23. Yeah, tw 27, I 27. think. 27, yeah. He, so Bradbury's, yes, while he's saving a life at the same time, look, he gets tripped up over here. So really, you're not, you're not getting out of that. You know, could, could you make the case, too, that does 27 get home to Kirk if you just don't do anything with him, if you're no. Bradbury? No, but he I mean, could he jump get, up and block the hit, ball. Though. He could jump okay. up and block the ball, Okay, which, he, which could be also devastating. But at the same time, he's what not. A if somebody's what a shot, him. though, too. Go back, it's a great throw, man. Pull up the fade. Do you have the fade? Is that the Thielen play? There it is. No, Kirk bullet to Hawk. 
right there. there That's exactly what I called it. Okay. Searles. I plays like it. this get this me spent. going. Yes. This was this was beautifully drawn up. This is part of that creativity, but there just wasn't enough of it. So here we go. Here we go. So we're obviously gonna fake. This is great. We go emotion. We got a little got a little man. We know what's up, this right? Is fourth and fourth and two too as well, if I recall, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, this yep, is fourth, fourth down. Play. So you might have to Dang. go back because we're gonna have to explain this from the wide. Go back from the wide. So it's man coverage right here, right? We notice right away as we go in motion, this guy's running with us. We're trailing. So all of a sudden, we set up this smoke out here to JJ, and this guy's going to start to play up in this press, and he thinks that he's the man. I think he actually goes to tackle JJ. Right? Keep go, keep playing it. Right there. Oh, yeah, look at <laughs> and that. And just like that, Hawk's gone on this fade. And if it's not for 20 across the top, this is gone. I mean – Completely housed. Yeah, this dude thinks he's stealing a pick six here. <sighs> That's a dart, man. But here's what I love throw. about it. He gets rocked so hard in real time. Yeah, I mean, he barely gets one foot on the ground. And he gets crushed. Oh, and he saw it coming too, dude. I, I'm mad salute to, to my man. Once again, this is... This is, but this went back into like Jeremiah last week. I said that if the, anything we do in the game, we should try and keep Ham on the field because it keeps him in base, and we should do some yep. play action, right? Which yep. they I, they did the whole game. They put seventy one in, and then at the same time, if they're going to do something in the pass game, it's got to be quick. Why? Because look, here's that same front, right? Instead of blitzing, they were like, "Hey, let's just go mess with these five guys up front, any which way we can." They're on the same stuff. Hey, look, it's the same blitz. Just the other way. <laughs> How many times can we get beat on the same damn thing, guys? They picked it up a little bit better this time. This is a step and throw type of play. You it's, should hey, pick it up. Listen, they're not all on the ground this time, all right? So it's yeah. a big plus. I thought so. I watched this play and thought Ed Ingram no. does a pretty good job here. I get he? mad at Bradbury and Ingram here because look, Ingram, send him faster. Hey, but he, he, cleaned, I'm all he right. cleaned up. I, cleaned I'm up all right guys. with this protection. I'm all right with it. Quit being so negative, Boone. All right. It's going to come back and bite us later. Don't worry. Season's over. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, get it? <laughs> Boy, you can, if you do this against the 49ers, you're screwed. Let me tell you're you. Dead. You're dead if that's supposed to over there. It is over. It's my point. Uh, okay, we got to do, uh, do the fourth and eight. We got to do the fourth and eight here. All right. Do we this really have it. to bring this stuff? People want to it's know. It's so anticlimactic. Like, it's happens. like, yeah. all right, fourth and eight. Here we go. Before. S Never mind. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No. I was just going to say, Boone, you've watched this enough. I've watched this about 100 times. Where are you throwing the football? Uh, I'm easily throwing it to JJ. <laughs> throwing See? it to him every time. <laughs> I love it. The bleep it. <laughs> he's, literally, he's literally double covered with a safety rolling I'm, over I'm the going top. To, I'm going to 17. I'm just saying that. I'll let Kurt, you go first. Kurt Warner said 17 should I'm also be the I'm going straight to 17. Okay, actually, let's, let's – okay, we'll roll this and then. I have, a hot, I have a hot take as someone who quit football in eighth grade, okay? Ooh, love those. All right. So, especially after listening to smarter people dissect this, and again, hey, I look. get that I'm. Hey, what what front is that? It's the same front, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, everyone's like, "Boone, you're so negative," but all of a sudden, we still can't pick it up in the fourth quarter. My. Well, they're gonna God. keep throwing it at you, right? So we're getting cut as we speak. Here's my dumb football guy thought on this. All right. So you've it. got, you've got Justin Jefferson. You've yep. got – so TJ Hawkins – again, and a lot of this is hindsight and whatnot, other people dissecting this. Yep. But Kirk knows – Kirk knows that Hawkinson is chipping on this play. Correct. Mm -hmm. So he's chipping, and there's almost no way he's going to chip and get out past the sticks. There's probably a defender there. Like, he's kind Correct. of a non-option unless it's a total – Well, show. I guess Kirk, Kirk considered it, it to a be a total show, threat. Yeah, you just answered All your right. own question. But you also know that the entire last three weeks, including this game – They've been bracketing Justin Jefferson and oftentimes in this game rolling a safety over the top to put a third guy to make sure that he can't beat you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to me, like, and, and Dalvin, Dalvin's basically staying in for a second, like, you know, it's, and, and then he's leaking out to the left. So, so to me, and tell me if I'm an idiot here, you kind of have three options. You've got whatever route Thielen's running on the opposite side of the field from the hash mark that you're taking the snap. I think he runs a fade, though, so that's kind of out. I, you guys uh, are fourth both and right. eight, yeah. Four, so you're, you have two options, don't you? You have Justin Jefferson prayer ball or K.J. Osborne one-on-one -on -one yeah. coverage coming over the middle. 
that's and, and I that's get that I have a go. week's worth of hindsight or whatever to say that, but Kirk knows that before the snap, doesn't he? Look at the defense. You should, yeah. You where should is see everybody? Pre snap read. Pre snap read tells me they're going to bracket eighteen. Right. And I should know that if I'm, they're looking like they're in man coverage here. If that safety wants to stand that far deep, I got to give my guy going over the middle of the field a shot. I believe this is a follow route up top, and it's perfect for man because look, the back guy gets a nice break off, and he gets this. See that right there? He should got, throw it right. You got to go 17. up. You got to go up and over the guy on the standing on the Vikings logo yeah. and give seventeen a shot over the middle of the field. Okay, but what again, about I the think he gets here? this is part of getting too locked in on Justin Jefferson sometimes, I think. I think this is why we have secret cryptic messages from Caitlin Thielen on Instagram. Yeah. You know, like oh I, my God. but like and you're not wrong for effort throw to the best God receiver we have. No, you know? here you would be though, dude. Like you should throw it to seventeen because you do know that he's gonna be the most seasons open. on the line. You gotta have pre snap read. Look, he never even looks to his left. If you watch him, that's one thing I noticed. Like he's right here, he's looking straight, and immediately he's staring right. He has no idea what's happening on the left side of his body right now. No. It looks like Dalvin kind of steps on Ezra's foot here, by the way, and maybe throws off. Well, number one, your center's leaning on their best pass rusher, so completely turned. This is, I mean, this is just a sign of my back hurts. I can't sit anymore. It, that's why. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is, if you look at his body posture here you can for Garrett Bradbury, right. like, you can just be like, he's he can't move. He's just like, oh, it hurts so bad. Kill oh. I'm going to save a life is what he's doing. Yeah. The problem is go back, and we're actually working on this tomorrow, Jeremiah. I'll call you in the morning about it. But Beautiful. we're going to work on when we get pressure, Ezra comes down, and he gets pressure back inside. And sometimes that doesn't happen. Like, normally a guy right here is going to continue to loop around. But here, he, look, he kind of pushes Ezra back out because he feels him oversetting. And see that right there? You are never strong enough to withstand that from anybody. That's every bit of – dude, you're getting pride open no matter what. Yeah, these guys are so good at being able to feel – we call it the soft shoulder, right? They put two hands on you, and they just start feeling in real time, and that's what makes the great ones great. Yeah. They can feel in real time where your pressure in your body is, right? He feels right now – if you look at and you stop it right before Dexter Lawrence comes back to the inside, you can see all of Ezra Cleveland's body weight on his left leg. Right. Right there. right there, there, right there, right. So See he it. can feel it. Like with Dexter Lawrence's left hand, can legitimately feel that that there is no way in a soft shoulder, and so he just knows I can pry right through that because he has no force in the ground. The Tell speed. him there you go because he has no force in the ground. See how his foot's up for that long? Right Dude, there, it's too late. You got. He has, to, he has to jump and look how far over he is now. You too. have to drop. You have no choice but to drop. If and you Dexter can't fight Lawrence force is, with force, you ain't no. stopping that man. Because Dexter Lawrence is naturally all his weight's leaning inside, and you're just not strong enough because as soon as you open that hip up like that, you just don't have the muscles in you to stop people. Yep. They're, phys physics, science. And, and sometimes kids like think I'm kidding, and I'm like, no, literally, these guys are going to pry you open even when you're trying to stop their best bull rush and you've seen it coming down. You're, they're just going to pry you open. And it's like Jeremiah said, they can feel everything, and it's, it's, it sucks, man. I feel like an idiot. The great ones are great for a reason. So true. Well, I'm getting kind of hungry oh. after that uh, film review. I started taking some notes on uh, what uh, kind of appetizers could be Soft ordered. Soft shoulders. Soft shoulders. <laughs> oh, buddy. I cannot wait. And you're going to come. You're going to get all moved. You're going to get all set. And then we're all just going to meet up in combine for a great time. Wow. Speaking of Vikings, it, Vikings, if you need a center, I know a guy. Oh, J. Mike. I know a guy. He's a homegrown what, kid. What round is he going in? I don't know yet. I'm I, I'm not at liberty to discuss that just yet. Okay. I got okay. I got to we'll figure out. I got to gather more information. Okay, we we'll get you in trouble. I did what, see though. him rank number two on an interior offensive line list yesterday. So. I will say this about J. Mike: he is one of the most polished centers I've met in a long time. Like he has it between the ears. He's extremely efficient when he moves. He's extremely strong at all of his angles, which is so rare because at times these young guys play with big bases or they want to set way out there. And I see it all the time, and he is just much different. And that's why I'm like, dude, I love him. And, like, talking to him in the gym, he understands a lot of things. I'm like, oh, gopher. this guy's Andy's a gopher. He's going to be dangerous. Let's get it. Row the boat. Sky PJ, PJ Fleck. PJ Let's Fleck. Let's go, Fleck. 
He's all well, bought in. Jeremiah, thanks for jumping in, man. This was oh, uh, I, thanks, I, I, unexpected surprise. Hey, you know, I, 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 I immediately I immediately messaged you after the game, and I was like, I expect an apology, oh. and I want to get on, and I want to rub it into Boone's <laughs> well, and then face I, on your show. I, I forgot to check my my DMs again, so I sent you the link like ten minutes before we went on. Like, well, he's, I don't know, he's probably forgot about it now. Yeah, I, I just I, I was watching it. I was watching Black Adam on HBO, and so I hadn't seen that yet, and I like jumped. <laughs> Like, oh, that's there? happening right now. Yeah, because <laughs> oh. someone didn't call me back. You said you were going to call me after you were shoveling. I probably did. I don't know. I got a shovel. <laughs> we were supposed to get 11 inches of snow and ended up just being Dude. like a pound of rain. It was terrible. We're about to get crushed tonight. It is what it is. But no, Can't I appreciate wait. you having me on, Mackie. It's always good to catch back up with you. Booner, it's always a good time with you. We got to figure always. some more how to do this more often. Love it, man. And uh, yeah, again, if you if you missed the plug earlier, you can find uh, you can find serials every week through the playoffs. Anyways, I'm Matthew Collar's Purple Insider podcast. All right, for Booney, Collier. for Jeremiah, for uh, for myself, Phil Mackey. Thanks for hanging out with us all season on Trenches with Boone.